For well over a month, we have stuck with nothing but Black Bear grinding over on Silver Ridge Peaks and hunting the new map in Riven Tooley Coast. And the hope had always been to get a great one Black Bear before we move on to other maps. Just with the knowledge that every map except for Silver Ridge Peaks has a population reset and redistribution, it was just natural that there's going to be the allure of the unknown. And I think honestly this is a pretty good example. Now I had no idea that there were more than one chamois in there and it looks like there were more than about 20. But chamois no longer have a drink time. And they're going to be in completely different areas and that's going to be the case for a bunch of species on a bunch of maps. Not necessarily not having drink times, I think only a couple species were affected with that in particular. But just so many things are going to be different and it is that unknown factor that makes the Hunter Call of the Wild so interesting and I just know that knowing that these things are out there and beginning to go and explore them is naturally going to make me start to maybe look at other maps and maybe take a little bit of time away from the Black Bear grind but it was bound to happen we're into August now and I wanted to check out Te Awaroa and see what it looks like and as for our first kill here a gray brown chamois they look a lot better, and most species do, in the new harvest green, and it's going to be stuff like that as well. At least from my perspective, there's a lot of species that I haven't gotten to see in the new harvest green because we've been so focused on the other two maps, but I'm curious to see what we can find today. I want to place a fair bit of emphasis on Seekadir. Of course, been looking for an albino buck for a while, and when a reset happens, you never know what might be out there. Now before we go and look for Seekadir, I wanted to kind of check around and see what else was going on on the map. And one thing that I found interesting right away is that there are definitely European rabbits in new places. Now, as far as I'm aware, the location of burrows on individual maps stays the same. So what I mean by that is, if you've got a burrow in one spot on your map, it's going to be there every time. But that doesn't mean in multiplayer that you're going to find burrows in those locations. I can still say with a pretty good degree of certainty, never in multiplayer or in single player have I seen Burrows here. So I think it's a new spot entirely, and that's actually pretty cool to see. Now these weren't particularly huge European rabbits, but a couple of males, 1.9 gold, and again in the harvest screen they're just so much better than they ever were before. That's really cool to see, a 1.7 there as well, both with the tan fur type. But to kind of elaborate on why we're not looking for Sika Deer more yet, I've kind of intentionally avoided much talk about the new maps and new drink times and stuff like that. I wanted to explore and experience them for myself, because that's kind of the fun part about having the redistributions, and I knew because we were going to spend so much time on the other maps that I'd end up knowing a bunch of stuff that I wanted to find out for myself if I were to pay attention to all that. So we're going to start with Sika Deer drink time here in a bit and see if they still drink at that same time. And we'll kind of go from there and hopefully learn on the fly, but good start already getting a couple of kills as we wait. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't at least check Red Deer in their new drink time. And the first one we see is a pretty bizarre looking mythical with honestly two of my favorite racks just not when they are combined like that. We'll go ahead and try to get him. We are at one of the smaller pew flakes by the way, so there are likely to be a whole lot more red deer than just that herd. I don't want to show on the map just yet where it is because I want to kind of be able to keep my eyes on whatever may run out of here. It looks like though, at least on this side, there might not be much more going on. There's a couple over there, but that's not a big deal if they flee. So it's this little lake up here kind of in the northeast. And we'll look around and see if there are any others. I bet there would be. Now in the past, you didn't really get hinds here. So seeing all the hinds along with the stags is kind of cool. It definitely, I would say, is a lower number of stags, at least compared to what I remember. Although as I start to spot around, it's probably not much different just with some hinds added in. In fact, I'm starting to think it might be a higher number of stags. Just none other than the level 7 and 8 being all that big. I want to check over on that side as well. I got another little one coming out of there. And a level 7 standing on that side. I was kind of thinking of just shooting this level 7 and calling it good. We'll try to get the three big ones. I don't know if the other 7 is going to hear this shot or not. That'll bring him down. And then the other level 7 on the right. 
somewhere. I think it must have been just under 200 meters because I'm pretty sure he did spook. But again, more and more red here become invisible. It is pretty insane to see that many stags all at one lake. So as for our bizarre looking mythical, 227 score, I almost feel like that's higher than either of these racks when they're even with score. That's interesting. But then at least for the level 7 we did get, ended up hitting the skull there, so ends up being a 188.6 silver. But still, a couple of nice tags here. And that does bring us to 821 in game. So the old Sneak of Deer drink time was like 830 to 1230. We'll go and start to walk around, and I, I really do think we are going to walk. Generally speaking, we'll run almost anywhere, but to give a little more time for stuff to walk in, and especially to... I guess just try to avoid spooking things we may not see. At least at the start till we kind of figure out what's going on, if Sneak of Deer even are drinking right now, we'll take it kind of slow. I think we might get our answer here. It just might take a moment. Like I said, we were a little early and that's why I wanted to take our time. But I'd like to think, I mean, they have to be traveling from one zone to the next. Although they're not necessarily going closer to the water, that doesn't mean they would drink at this lake anyway. But I want to not take any shots until we see what they're doing. Because eventually they're going to have to settle into a new zone of some kind, whether it's shrinking or otherwise. That will be confirmation enough. They do not drink at the same time. So the feed time, 6.30 to 10, could maybe indicate a drink time after 10 o'clock. We'll still kind of explore around and see what we can find. Now I don't think this was the biggest one that we saw, but... We'll go ahead and take that one just because we now know their feed time and I mean since we've been sitting here watching them we might as well get something for the effort. And again, not like it's anything special, a 100 score, but he did help us to at least learn a little bit about what to expect out here. And that will pretty much confirm they drink after they feed, so 10 to 1300 is to get to your drink time now. That's actually going to be pretty interesting because Red Deer drink earlier in the morning, 6 to 10, you could go between Red Deer and Seek Deer and have basically like almost two hours of quality hunting between the two species. That might be something we do some more going forward, but as for these couple of Seek Deer, I think that level three might be the best one. We'll try to take that one out. And by the way, just in terms of hunting during their feed time, it was pretty tough. There weren't a lot of opportunities to catch them kind of out in the open. And when I finally did spot these ones, they were headed towards the water and I just had a feeling that we were going to be seeing basically exactly what we did and that they were going to head to the water and go and drink. Now, in theory, we're deleting a zone by doing this, but we're also getting a bunch of Seekadir respawns when it is a fresh map and all fresh spawns. So I always think that's a good idea. I also don't mind deleting zones when I'm not really familiar with where they all are anyway. And that was the other thing I was thinking of, running along looking for Sika Deer. I can't remember the last time we did a Te Aoroa single player video, and it's mostly because we got so familiar with where to expect to see animals and what to expect to see through the different grinds we were doing looking for an albino Sika Deer, another rare fallow and stuff like that, the single player wasn't as appealing and again to go back to the intro, it's this unknown factor that makes it far more interesting but a bunch of silvers there, like I said a bunch of respawns and I'm curious if this area is going to be good. I did check along here a bit during their feed time and only saw females, curious to see if we end up finding any males going up there now and this has been another thing, I think turkeys are maybe less kind of appealing to the community in general as they've been added to so many maps so I haven't touched on it yet. They're everywhere. It used to really only be you'd kind of get them basically along the river and for the most part that was kind of it. I had them down here in the southeast, all over down here in the southwest and I'm betting those aren't the only spots. By the way, another Sika Deer heading out of there so I bet we're going to be seeing some more. Now that's looking a little bit better. First kind of decent Sika Deer so far, up to 186. And this is our second visit to this lake. This is where we initially spotted the feeding Sika Deer. And there are so many more down here. I mean, it would be easy to just not see some kind of decent sized Sika Deer just hanging around maybe back further in the brush. But we'll try to get the big one and maybe one other one. Now in this case, 
this is not a zone I'd like to delete. Clearly there are a ton of males and that's the type of thing you don't want to remove. So I don't know what kind of leftover hunting pressure there is. Definitely a bit. So we'll stick with just the two. And finally one that's definitely going to be a gold and I didn't pay attention to the spotted one that much. It maybe had a chance. Looking at it, I don't think he's quite going to be there. I think gold is 130 something. He is 130. Gold is 136, so close. And do I have to say it again? Seeing these species in the harvest screen, the new and improved harvest screen, it just, they look so much better. Everything just is a lot crisper, I guess, is probably the best way to say it. 178.7 for that guy. Nice brown for a type on him. And I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but that is almost enough for me to say sticky deer hunting is going to be way better now than it had been for the past year or so. Initially, it always seemed like sticky deer hunting was really good. You could find a lot of males pretty easily. Something happened at some point that, at least in my experience, that was no longer the case. I'm hoping nothing changes here. Maybe getting them more spread out would be good. That was kind of a lot of bucks for one spot. But just seeing that many males, I've hunted for several hours on numerous occasions looking for sega deer and not even gotten a max weight estimate uh, mail. That is a rather small one. We'll take that real quick, but already here we had the max weight estimate on that level four. We'll go ahead and take that. We might stir some things up by taking that shot. I did see some kind of movement back there, just a doe, but there might be more around here still. For this guy though, a 95.5 score. And the thing I'm most intrigued about is definitely going to be these two lakes up here. This one obviously is pretty famous for Sika Deer, and I'm curious if there's going to be any or as many as there used to be. But we'll check that out after we're done down here. For now, I want to check around and make sure we didn't miss anything. For once, this lake might actually be worth visiting. I've gone here many times because you could get the occasional Sika Deer at it, but it was never all that many. What I'm seeing here is probably enough reason to go and set up a tent. There's a whole bunch of bucks. I don't think any are all that special. It's almost hard to tell what fur types I might be at that range. I think we'll go ahead and hit that level four as well, just again for the sake of trying to get the respawns. We can go ahead and let those ones run off or for some reason. At least that one's not going anywhere. Now I don't have tents on me. I kind of wish I would have brought them, but I didn't intend on really switching up our setup that much. But that is pretty cool to see. We are down here in the kind of southwest corner at this particular lake, which again, you might get one or two Sika Deer here in the past. Now there seem to be a whole bunch, including one that I definitely did not see before. That spread on that guy. Level four Diamond Sika are a thing. That had an estimate up to 219. Maybe there's some chance there. I mean, we got time. This one's got to float the rest of the way back still. Might as well go down there and take advantage of it. And even more so than that, the first one we shot at long range is going to float all the way back. So plenty of time until we get to actually move on. As for this guy, I'm really intrigued to see what he scores. I'm not sure I even know what rack that is. That is a 191.2 gold though. One of the biggest level fours we've shot. 198.74 is diamond. Pretty good size one at 68.29 kg. And again, I think the most interesting thing is this lake, having all those males, it's going to be worth coming and checking out for sure. I hope that it kind of stays that way and continues to get a bunch of them at it. It would be nice to kind of have things sort of, again, distributed more evenly across the map rather than just being one really good lake. And so far, at least these three have all been really good lakes. So. We've got an hour of their drink time left. I want to get up to these two lakes still, so we'll grab these guys and get moving up that way. I want to say both golds, a 167.6 for that guy. I mean, all of these are really good looking deer. Again, just it's been so long since we've had a hunt where we've killed that many good ones. And I don't know, we might have some of the best lakes ahead of us. First dark spotted fur type today, 149.8 gold again. And let's go and see what's going on up north here. At the very least, this lake seems to be quite good for Zika Deer. Got another one here which is downwind and kind of trying to spook, so we'll take him. Almost had a shot at that other one, but 
We'll let that go just because I don't want to be tracking for too long. We're kind of getting towards the end now. A little after 12 o'clock. I did go ahead and check this lake. One seek a male, a level two. So I guess maybe that's no longer going to be the best lake. But again, things being kind of more divided up, that can be a really good thing. We almost spotted something I thought. Unless we stepped over a track, which I don't see one. There's got to be something over there I missed. It might have been that red deer, actually. So that's interesting to know. But I like, actually, that there's Sika deer at this league. The first Sika deer we ever spotted back when Te Aroa came out was coming up to this outpost and past this lake. So it's kind of cool to see him here again. I never really got that many in the, again, the last year or so after something seemed to change. Another gold here. And I think what we're going to do for the last little bit of their drink time is actually go back down here to the river. I want to start here and go up and around and just kind of see if there are more that are drinking there that we maybe missed while they were feeding. And with yet another bunch of Sika deer males, I think this is probably going to be our last stop. So again, I don't want to delete any zones. We actually happen to have three rounds loaded. So we're going to try to take all three if we can, or at least fire all three. And other than a kind of poor shot on the third one, I think that's going to work. We might be able to get reloaded and still kind of save whatever metal that would have given. And I think we accomplished that. And there actually are even more over on the other side. I've got a tent over there. And I guess, you know, at this point, we've been more or less kind of shooting as many Sika as we can and trying to get some of those respawns for the future. We might as well continue with that theme and at this rate, well, at least attempt to take all four down. Kind of unfortunate that one started to trot as we shot, but... I guess that kind of ensures we don't cause any extra hunting pressure. So, unfortunately, no diamonds, no albinos for the Sika today, but honestly, the most important information is just the amount that we saw and the fact that they do drink in daylight, and that kind of combination of Red Deer and Sika Deer I think could be a lot of fun, maybe for a stream or something sometime going forward. And definitely, just getting to see another map is... Something that we've been missing for a long time. I knew it was going to be a lot of fun. And quite frankly, again, the reason I kind of avoided it was the knowledge it was going to be a blast and there's going to be a lot of positive things. I'd consider the amount of Sika deer we saw today a positive and something that I wouldn't be surprised if we're back here going after again sometime in the near future. But got three more over here to go and claim real quick. I don't think any of them were anything special, but... It is three more respawns and hopefully working towards that albino. Now, we never really tried that hard to find an albino Sika Deer prior to, again, whatever kind of change happened where it seemed to be tougher to find Sika Deer. And I wonder if things are going to remain as they are, and I hope they do, if it's going to be a little more doable to actually find one. And I guess that only remains to be seen. But on that note, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.